Georgia. Your hometown, what's it like to see this out here? It's almost like a dream come true. You know, and I've been doing this for so many years and following UCF, and now to see a spring college game day, it's a great throw because I tell you what, they, they, they deserve it. In 1997, I think you said you expected UCF because of the airport. It's a little more than the airport <laughs> well, now, right? Well, I, I expect them to be up there, but it's a little bit longer than I thought. But uh, I've always had great respect for this university because the local town is uh, supporting them and the great fact that uh, they have a good school and great academics. What do you think about this matchup? Well, I think it's a great matchup because Cincinnati is number one in the conference in almost all defenses. And number eight in the country is UCF in offense. So it's a perfect matchup for beautiful downtown East Orlando. The fan base has been clamoring for this. You know, a lot of a lot of fans feel like UCF's not been getting enough yeah. national respect. What kind of atmosphere do you expect tomorrow? I expect the largest crowd we ever had. I think the largest crowd we ever had for ESPN's College Game Day will be right here because I think the enthusiasm is great and the following is great. And the welcome you expect for your colleague, Mr. Herbstreit? Oh, he'll be fine. Yeah, that, that's the last, he's got no nothing to worry about. You, uh, you, because the UCF fans are good football fans. They understand that you give your opinions, sometimes they're more different to you. You've lived here, so you saw where UCF football started out and now being on yeah. the biggest stage. Can you just talk about how excited you're for being Well, I think that the fact that UCF has been coming along slowly but surely, in the last two years it's been magnificent. You know, they, had the long, they have the longest winning streak now since Alabama has had one three, three years ago. So so that's pretty good company we mentioned with Alabama. When you coached the Renegades, what did you make of UCF then? <laughs> well, I didn't I didn't have much chance to think about them because I had a hell of a lot of problems with the Renegades. And uh, but I, I always always felt this in you know, the making of a great institution, a great football program. It's just gonna take time and the right people, and they certainly have got the people in place now. Twenty-five years you've been traveling around, yeah. putting the mascot head on. How energized do you get when you go to a new city and you put on a new mascot hat? Well, it, uh, I think it, it, it uh, hit the crescendo last uh, couple of weeks ago when we went to Pullman, Washington, and the Washington State fans have been yelling for us for 15 years to come there, and we were there, and it was a great thrill. But I, there's nothing like being here in my hometown because, you know, it, I have a special feeling for UCF. I want them to be the great school. Are you going to be looking like Nitro at the end of the program? We'll see. <laughs> How excited were you to be able to be, uh, to not have to travel this weekend, to actually? Yeah, to I didn't have to go through the security line at the airport. That's the best thing of all. To go through, through that damn security line. To, whoop. I, I, I'm sure you have clear. I really appreciate that. <laughs> I'm sure you have clear. Pardon? I'm sure you have clear. I'm sure you can go through pretty easy. No, it's still not. With clear, it's still long. I, I, your, your partner, Kirk, Kirk, I can't hear you. Oh, your partner, Kirk, Kirk she was uh, quoted saying he was a huge fan of the 14 playoff. Now he thinks it should be expanded to give UCF. I'm a, a, I'm a, what do you I'm think? a great fan of the 14 playoff. <laughs> exactly this right now. Because it adds controversy and it brings attention to the college football. If I was, you know, I wouldn't change a single thing about this. I'd have it exactly as it is right now. How that's would UCF? My, that's my opinion. How would UCF stack up if they ended up in a Power Five conference? Well, that's to me, that's the secret. You want to the hell with the playoffs? Politics with yourself into a conference. Now that then you get into playoffs. But I think the biggest problem the ESAF has is they worry too much about the playoffs. Hell with it. Well, you keep winning 22 straight games is tough to do. I tell you what, and they should be thrilled and honored. And uh, I think that the best system right now is the way college football is running. What do you say about uh, the star quarterback for Pennsylvania? Oh, he's a terrific player. He's a star of the football team. And one of the reasons they their 22 game winning streak. If I was Cincinnati, I'd go after him. I go after him and I stay after him and stay after him and stay after him and try to hurt him and hit him and handle him and, and, and disrupt his game. Like, similar like I think uh, Tennessee did against Brady recently, right? They went after him until they made him blink. That's what I do. What impact do you think UCF's fan base had on them deciding to come to UCF? I can't hear that. What impact do you think UCF's fan base had on them the college game day deciding to come to UCF? Well, it was always, it had to do with it. But I think the most important thing, they won. They were winning football games, and it got to be a combination of them winning football games and Cincinnati winning football. Listen, this Cincinnati team is a good football team. 
They're nine and one. They're four and one in the road. They're a good football team, and this will be the toughest test by far. UCF several of you. Coach, the transition from Scott Frost to Josh Heupel, I think that gets lost a bit. The, uh, an entire coaching change, the entire staff. How tough can that be? Well, I think it's very, very tough, but it's new staff to, to follow up on the winning team, and they have done it. I've got great respect for Randy Shannon, the defensive coordinator. I know they give up a lot of, of the yards, but they haven't given up many points, and they got a lot of turnovers. And I think they've got turnovers in 27 or 28 straight three games. So Randy Shannon is a terrific defense coach. Does it matter who gets in the playoff? Can anybody beat Alabama? <laughs> you got to be. Maybe the Patriots. <laughs> and, and, uh, I tell you, the only football team in the country that has a chance at Alabama is a team that can throw the football. They got to be able to throw the football and hopefully outscore Alabama because there's not going to be. You're not going to stop them. And you got to throw the ball. You can't run against them. So you might as well try to throw it all the time. Simmer to Purdue and Ohio State did this year. The guy threw the ball 75 times, I think. Yeah. And that was good enough to win. I mean, is there anything that can be done? People talk about Alabama, Clemson being back in the playoff over and over again. Is there anything that can be done to get fresh blood in the playoff? Beat them. <laughs> Question, beat them. Hey, hey, why bitch about them? They're doing so good. You got to beat them. It's, beat them. I say, don't complain about them. Just beat them. If, if, if you got every chance you can to beat them. Because I tell you what, the system now is really good. You get four teams in there, your four best teams, and then you worry about the late run. But I wouldn't worry about Alabama and Clemson. I'm telling you one thing, somebody's going to beat Alabama and Clemson. I don't know who it is. Coach, this is the youngest school to ever hear. Sorry, this is the youngest school to ever host college game day. You know, back in the day when you guys started the show, you know, this it was it, it, it was all the blue bloods yeah. of college football. So what do you think has been the factors over the last 25 to 30 years that's enabled a school like UCF to get to this level? All right, first, was John Hitt, the president of this university. I watched him, I studied him a long time. He was a great president and gave the football program everything they need. Then it started with Don Jonas. You guys remember Don Jonas and the football team? And then it went slowly, slowly, slowly until it, it built a program. It did it with the right way. And I think now the situation is to keep doing it. And I, I think that's the problem. What do you think the future is? Wait, I can't hear you. What do you think the future is for this university? It's, it's got a very young alumni base, a very young school, and obviously with the football program growing and a lot of the athletic departments growing and donations are going up. What do you think the future is for UCF? It's un I think the problem is this, it's a great school, but it might be too good for other people who want to play it. I've, I've seen that situation. You get good, but don't get too good. Because if you get too good, the rest of the big guys will want to play it. But I think it's, it's a perfect situation for a conference to take. I think, personally, why, 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 why this is a perfect place for Big 12 to come to me. And that's the only conference probably that has room to go with. First of all, I don't know, he said I was born in Lake Mary. No, I wasn't born in Lake Mary. That's it, uh, computer stuff. I was born in Chicago, <laughs> Illinois. That's not Lake Mary. I, I knew, knew, didn't know any much about uh, UCF then. All right, guys, thanks so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you very much, everybody. Go nice. <laughs> I was going to, well, I think what 